And mm. 17 years on Corrie. So you were yeah. how old when you joined? I was 17, so oh. I'm 35 now, so it's Gosh. more than half my life, so it's quite scary. Yeah, that's a yeah. big mm. chunk of your life, isn't it? And yeah. you still love it. I do, it's brilliant. Yeah. And, you know, when we're getting storylines like this, it's just, it's a real treat and it's, yeah, it's a really special what? place to work. What? And there's some serious stuff in there as well, mm. N not just you, all over the street. Yeah. And it's resonated with a lot of people at home, mm -hmm. hasn't it, recently? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the storyline at the moment, the male rape storyline, mm. you know, it's had such an impact. Um, the, the charity that we're working with, Survivors, have had an increase of 1,700%. Uh, of people coming forward to say, yes, it's happened to me. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of them male because men are much less likely to talk about it, mm. which I just think is fantastic. Yeah, it's the part mm. of the it's brilliant. Soap, isn't it, really? It's yeah, brilliant. It really is. Yeah, but the other pair of soap is that your character is slinging the drinks over and oh, you think yes. you could be accused of encouraging women to behave badly. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> you know, in that montage, if anything doesn't go your way, you're slinging the... Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's done it a few times. She's definitely feisty. Thank you very much for backing our campaign because, you know, we think it's a really important one. And uh, this goes back 10 years for you. A really terrible time in your life. Yes. You sadly lost your, your beautiful baby boy, Archie. Yeah. And then you thought, I really need to go for my smear test. What yeah, um, so I lost Archie in the February. And... Uh, and it was sadly when Jade Goody then passed away in March. Right. I think it was, was it Mother's Day or around Mother's Day? Um, and after everything that just happened to me and then seeing that, it was obviously quite an emotional time. Uh, and I just thought, oh, I need to make sure that I go and have, have my smear test. So it was just like a push, like I need to go and, go and do it. And uh, upon doing that, I um, was then told that I had precancerous cells. Uh, so you can imagine that I was absolutely terrified, distraught, wasn't in the best place mentally anyway. Uh, and yeah, so, so luckily for me, um, it was caught early and they were able to treat me and, and remove those successfully. So what, what, how quickly did you have to have treatment? What did that treatment consist of? Uh, so you have like a colposcopy and they have a look at you know, your cells, they grade them, they, you know, they, they decide what's the best uh, treatment for you. And for me, it was by using a LETS, which kind of is a, a hot, like a wire almost, to remove them. And then you then have to go and, and once that's kind of healed, you then have to go and have another checkup to see whether they've all been successfully mm -hmm. taken. And luckily for me. If you, do you, do you often think what might have happened if you hadn't have done gone for that smear absolutely yeah absolutely well if i hadn't who knows mm. i mean i think the thing is about about cervical cancer is it is treatable it's so treatable if it's found at the right time and so i can't you know i do this a lot on social media and i'm always a big kind of champion of this because it's so important and for what people might see is well, it's really uncomfortable or oh, I'm really scared or it's a bit embarrassing embarrassment. or you embarrassment know. is one of the yes. things that yeah. comes through a lot yeah and women. For, for the sake of 30 seconds of discomfort it's or whatever you know it's 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 it could save your life so it's yeah. so important so go and do it but your relationship with Shane Ward's fantastic, <coughs> isn't it? On Aww. screen, not so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> off screen. You do, you have a great friendship, actually, oh, he's which great, again, you yeah. work long old hours together. Yeah. It just makes it fun. Yeah, we're like, you know, the kids at school that shouldn't be allowed in the same group. <laughs> <laughs> That's us. We, we are like 12 year olds when we get together, but yeah, he's, he's so much fun. So will he be leaving too? Yes, he's he's leaving before me. Oh, that makes so, it all very interesting. Oh, then, if you're honestly, both guys, there there's just some brilliant stuff coming up. So stay mm. tuned. Mm. <laughs> and you get up to all sorts with um, Shane off camera as well. Well, not yes. kind of off camera. It's being filmed, but by yes. you. <laughs> yeah, we like to do spoofs of, of famous movies, and we, and we put those on our um, Instagram. And yeah, oh, there that we go. That scene from uh, Come on, you must know this one. Yes, that popped up. It, it's not what it looks like. <laughs> oh, that's my pottery. <laughs> Scene from Ghost. From Ghost. No, yeah. but I really didn't get that because I was someone I was listening to, so I thought, oh my god, you've been filmed without you knowing. <laughs> and literally, my heart dropped for you. Obviously, you've only been in, in Corrie for a wee while a couple now. Of years. Yeah, yeah, just for yeah. A, a couple of years. Yeah. And in that short time, despite the two of you absolutely loathing each other, 
on screen, the two of you have become absolute best mates. Oh, we're at, we are. We're absolutely best mates, which is is hilarious when we have all the sort mm. of, you know, horrible stuff to yeah, do together. Because yeah. at least we can just give each other a cuddle at the end and say... Sorry I punched you in so... the face. That's yeah. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> yeah, we're very like we're that. Very yeah, nice. yeah. <laughs> she felt terrible about hitting me. I was like, no, it's just great. Did, was that an act? Did she actually... Uh, no, you. she didn't. No, that was acting. I mean, I wouldn't mind that, but you, you can't do that anymore. You're not allowed to do that anymore. Oh, what, properly hit the red mark or, yeah. Oh, yeah. really? Mm. That's good. I might become an actor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we just say on behalf of everyone, well done. Oh. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, well done to the team at Coronation Street for, for writing such an incredible story, but also to, to all of you for portraying it so well. Um, Shane, I'll start with you. Was, was it true that the producer sort of took you to one side months ago and said, just <clears> to know, <throat> this is where your character is, is heading? So that looking back, there can be little clues, if you like, as to the way his mind was working. Yeah, I mean, uh, Kate Oates, uh, producer, she approached me before Christmas and said, you know, we've got this, this idea. Yeah. For Aidan. Um, and, yeah, instantly I was, I was, I was scared because I knew that this was a decision I had to make. Could I do this storyline? Could I do it with justice? Yeah. Or do I carry on as Aidan and do a different storyline? Um, but I instantly knew. Um, I think after a long discussion with my family, my partner, yeah. and with Kate and the Samaritans and everyone involved, like Calm, and I knew that this was, was bigger than me, bigger than the show, and the biggest thing we'll ever do. And the impact alone has been, has, has, has been incredible. So, yeah, I knew that the moment I took this on um, that... Yeah, it's going to be quite an emotional. emotional How journey. did you work <clears throat> through it? Did, did you, you you mentioned the Samaritans? With, did you speak to people who had worked yeah. as counsellors? I had did a great to... a great meeting with Kate with the Samaritans with Calm, <clears throat> and um, again because it's, it's got to be handled carefully, mm. delicately, um, and most of all with, with respect. Yeah. To unfortunately, to all the, the people that have lost somebody through this, so I knew that um, it was a huge challenge ahead yeah. for us to be able to capture that and also to be able to portray that across to the public. Yeah. And um, thankfully, we did that. So. What was so heartbreaking was all of us sitting here, and I'm sure people at home and people in the audience here, all of us have first-hand experience of yeah. this. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I can just see by looking at you all, you know. I'm sure we've all had that experience of it's a connection to someone that, like a loved one or someone you know mm. who may have attempted or whatever. Um, and, it, and it's scary. I mean, the numbers alone is what shocked me the most. I knew yeah. that it was something that us men didn't talk about yeah. because it is that taboo, it is that stigma of we're manly, we're full of pride, we've got all the answers, we've got everything, everything figured out, and we actually haven't. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think more than all, anything. All, all the shame <clears throat> thing, I think men just yeah. do. I know mm -hmm. it sounds like a generalisation, but it's true, just men find it harder to say that they're struggling. Yeah. As women, we tend to open up to yeah. yeah. everything. But we've both other. been inundated with messages oh, from people who have, who have actually said, I've been really close to this. Yeah. Thank you. I was quite shocked to read um, that, especially in this day and age, that you still get quite a bit of homo homophobic comments. Yeah, oh, yeah, especially on social media it's it's unbelievable I mean I I do highlight it um, not all of it actually um, but I, I think it's kind of important to let people know that it's yeah. still going on yeah, I mean yeah. obviously I think the, the UK at large is a very accepting country we're very yeah. lucky here uh, I mean when you consider what's you know happening in Brunei today mm -hmm. um, but then of course you know we've got arguments happening recently about whether LGBT uh, should be discussed in schools mm -hmm. uh, and things like that I mean section 28 was repealed in 2003 mm -hmm. so yes. it's, it's surprising that 16 years later we're still so, having those yeah. sorts of discussions I mean if mm -hmm. children are being talked about families then in my opinion they should be talked about all sorts of families mm -hmm. you know it's not about sex education, it's about life education. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's, why, that's why, I mean, soap, soaps are... I mean, soaps get a lot of knocks, but soaps, when they tackle these big issues, yeah. I think mm. they really do do... I mean, it's, it's such a powerful tool, really, into people's homes, isn't Incredibly it? So powerful. So do you feel like the weight of responsibility, almost? Well, is there that? is a respo I mean, you know, I'm a gay man myself anyway, so that I feel that there is a responsibility. I'm in the public eye, so therefore my voice probably reaches further than than others and I mm. do feel that yeah there is a level of responsibility there to to a highlight that these things are still going on um, but I, like you say I mean I think soaps are incredibly powerful and I think that what what we can do with these storylines is 
encourage people to have conversations so mm. uh, uh, about uh, sort of subjects that people might feel a little bit uncomfortable bringing up themselves. Well,